why brown babies face discrimination, mixed-race children in post-World War II Germany. In the aftermath of World War II, as racism loomed large on both sides of the Atlantic, a group of individuals emerged facing an uncertain future. These were the brown babies, born to black GIs and white European women in post-World War II Germany. Following the Allied forces' victory over Germany, the United States assumed the role of occupying West Germany from 1945 to 1955. While American soldiers were tasked with promoting democracy in a country devastated by fascism, the dark cloud of Jim Crow still hung over the U.S. military, and black GIs often found themselves subjected to discrimination by their white American counterparts. However, the most potent source of racial tensions was the relationships that formed between African-American soldiers and white German women. These unions resulted in the birth of around 5,000 mixed-race children who, due to the color of their skin, faced a heartbreaking fate as societal outcasts. African-American GIs and their encounters with German women at the close of World War II, there were approximately 1.6 million American troops stationed in Germany. However, as the threat of Nazi rebellions subsided, this number swiftly dwindled to around 100,000, with approximately 10,000 black GIs serving in segregated units. The year 1951, marked by the onset of the Cold War, witnessed an increase in the American troop presence in Germany, with their numbers reaching 250,000. Yet, in the face of this expansion, black GIs remained capped at 10% of the total. While it is true that some Germans still clung to residual Nazi ideologies of white supremacy, many African-American soldiers found a degree of welcome within the recreational facilities and local bars of Germany. They enjoyed freedoms and acceptance that they often couldn't experience back in the United States, even as their presence provoked resentment from their white American counterparts and the military police, who sometimes responded with brutality. Maria Hohn, a professor at Vassar College and the author of G.I.s and Fräuleins, The German-American Encounter in 1950s West Germany, explains, if they would see a black soldier with a white German woman, they would sometimes assault them and try to separate them forcefully because they knew that this could not have happened if the soldier had returned to Alabama or Mississippi or anywhere in the U.S. German women who associated with African-American soldiers faced threats, verbal abuse, social ostracism, and were occasionally denied ration cards. Despite these risks, romantic relationships persisted, resulting in the conception of mixed-race children. However, unlike the babies fathered by white occupation soldiers, whose estimates range from at least 67,000 to possibly over 100,000, mixed-race infants couldn't easily blend into society and were derogatorily labeled as misslingskinder, a term for biracial children. The emergence of brown babies during an era when bearing children out of wedlock carried significant social stigma, the prospect of marriage was a challenging one for black GIs and German women. A soldier had to obtain permission from his commanding officer, and when it came to marriage requests from black soldiers who sought to wed their pregnant German girlfriends, the answer was typically a resounding no, often followed by a reassignment. Hone underscores the pivotal role of commanders and sergeants in this matter, explaining, commanders and sergeants in charge could stop those relationships overnight just by shipping the soldiers out or sending them to a different command. In the case of Daniel Cardwell, born in Marburg, Germany, his biological parents encountered a similar fate as they attempted to marry. My father was being transferred from place to place, reveals Cardwell, who later authored A Question of Color, a brown baby's search for identity in a black and white world. Unbeknownst to Cardwell's mother, his father was sent to Korea and tragically passed away when Cardwell was just four months old. Daniel Cardwell was subsequently adopted at the age of three in 1953 by an African-American couple residing in Washington, D.C., thanks to the brown baby plan. This private adoption agency was established by Mabel Grammer, a black journalist associated with the Afro-American newspaper. Married to a warrant officer stationed in Germany, Grammer learned of orphanages filled with mixed-race children and decided to take action. She published photos of these kids in the Afro-American, appealing to established black couples to adopt the children who became known as the Brown Babies. 
With international adoption laws in a constant state of flux, Grammar navigated through bureaucratic obstacles and organized proxy adoptions for African-American couples unable to travel to Germany. To the relief of German officials who were concerned that mixed-race children might struggle to assimilate into society, fearing they would become a social problem, the adoptions were ultimately approved. Scandinavian airlines also played a role by agreeing to transport the children to the United States. During her husband's postings in Germany from 1950 to 1954 and 1959 to 1965, Grammer orchestrated the adoption of at least 500 mixed-race children and adopted 12 herself. Desperate German mothers also reached out to black army couples stationed in Germany. Shirley Gindler Price, the founder of the Black German Cultural Society, was adopted at the age of two in 1955 in Ansbach, Germany, where her biological mother crossed paths with her adoptive parents. Gindler Price observes, There are quite a few of us that are not grammar babies, but I think grammar created that environment where a number of us were adopted. Mixed-race children in England The issue of finding suitable homes for brown babies extended beyond Germany and also impacted black soldiers stationed in England, particularly concerning interracial relationships. According to Lucy Bland, a professor at Anglia Ruskin University and the author of Britain's Brown Babies, the stories of children born to black GIs and white women in the Second World War, certain villages and towns in England held separate dances for black GIs one day and white soldiers the next. Although England did not have official segregation laws, the idea was proposed by the Americans as a means of reducing tensions between black and white soldiers over relationships with women. In total, there were an estimated 2,000 brown babies in Britain, with more than half raised by their mothers. Some were placed in children's homes, while a small percentage were adopted or fostered. The adoption or fostering of mixed-race children presented challenges, making it difficult to find them suitable homes. In cases where black GIs and British women wanted to marry, they were often met with refusal from commanding officers. An uncertain future Truman's Executive Order 9981, which aimed to desegregate the U.S. Armed Forces, was signed in 1948. However, its impact on the status of black soldiers remained limited due to the extended period required for its implementation. Furthermore, bans on interracial marriages continued until 1967 when the U.S. Supreme Court declared them unconstitutional. Mabel Grammer's adoption program received both praise and criticism, with German social service officials expressing concerns about the perceived lack of vetting and oversight. In Germany, most brown babies were raised by their mothers or grandparents, while others resided in orphanages or were adopted by Danish families.